Hello and welcome to episode number 231 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. This is The Secret Show. Now, last week we didn't do a secret show because Mark had computer issues, which we're going to get to in a minute. But at the start of the previous secret show, I planned on playing something on my jukebox. And there's only one song that I can play. And it is a song written by my grandfather in the 1960s. And uh, it was a station promotion and they played it occasionally on the station. It was called uh, WKMI, That's My Hometown, by the group The Melody Laners, written by Howard Steer. So you can look it up, Howard Steer, WKMI, Melody Laners, and a picture of the 45 will come up. Now the 45 is in the actual jukebox right now. And last time I went to play it, I pushed the wrong numbers. That was my fault, but this time I'm gonna get it right. It's a very short song. And um, it's just fun, and people have often asked me, written me, et cetera, and said, can you please use the jukebox and play us a song? But I get a copyright strike, but not this one because my grandfather wrote it, and it's not a song anybody made any money off of. So here we go with the uh, 1973 original Wurlitzer jukebox, which was in my, grandfa in my father's radio station, which used to be owned by my grandfather. Uh, and my grandfather bought them as a radio station uh, decorations, one of them, this one, and the other one bought at the same time in 73 and was part of a giveaway to a lucky listener. So I'm very happy to have inherited this. And um, it works great. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed, everyone. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the song. It's very short. And it's about Kalamazoo, Michigan and how awesome it is. <laughs> That's why I left. Hold on. Fingers crossed. I don't hear anything. It's not playing yet. It's spinning around and the needle's going on the record. Two boxes are slow. Let me tell you about the Capitol Zoo. It's a wonderful place to be. Industry, university, hub of democracy. The land of lakes has what it takes. City of renown. Chorus. I've seen lots of really great cities across the land. Give me a lot, but not enough. Living here just grand. Why they sing of Paris and Spring, but no place I found. Beats Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, that's my hometown. Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, that's my hometown. Last part. What are you going to do when it stops? Talk to you. <laughs> Parchments and others that are hot. And WKMI has the modern sound of Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. <laughs> you have this memorized? Yeah. Take it to the top, Melody Laners. Yeah. Two, two thoughts come <laughs> to mind while listening to this ditty. One, one is one why? is that it, no 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 it, it uh, you had a lot of build up to it but because I, I absorb a ton of media first thing I thought of was Pleasantville that it would be one of those songs that just kind of playing in the background on some radio. Yes, and you know, I'm wearing this certain type of dress that's like below the knee and very like ladylike because it does remind me of the Pleasantville vibe. Oh yeah, yeah, you could totally, if you had a hat, you could totally walk through a scene in Pleasantville like that. Exactly, I wanna show this picture and I'm going to have to talk with my voice muffled just in order for the camera to set on it. This is inside WKMI, the station where this jukebox used to live and this is my father, and you can see the little flag on the microphone that says WKMI. So here it comes. All right, if anybody can see it, there you go. Look how cool that looks, the microphone, and look at the phone. <laughs> and my father, David Edward Steer. Look at the records near his hand. Pretty cool. And so, the studio lights being run by Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, that's the reflection of the light that's right there. I'm gonna hang this up on the wall again. 
this made it to the documentary uh, behind the curve, by the way. They should yes, it did. The other thing that song kind of, if I was going to use that song in, in some sort of production, I it's got kind of a haunting retro feel to it. I don't so, know about haunting. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Think of it this way. Uh, a horror movie where it's kind of, it's, it's juxtaposed to, you know, like oh. slow moving people like walking through, you know, um, and, and being stalked by whatever killer. Yeah, I think that was a movie like that where something was playing on the turntable that was quite happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. People, people being stabbed at the same time. Well, that's going to make me feel real good. <laughs> well, no, it's got it's got that little feel. Yeah, it, that's it's it's depending on how you play it, like on an old record player, have it echoing weird. Uh, yeah. Usually, it's got to echo it's through something. But, I'm yeah. gonna move this so people could see. There it is, right there. And one last. I mean, not that I'm. You know, there it is. Da -da -da. What your chest? No, <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's all right. We can keep it down there. Come on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Wow, whew. all right, we finally did it. <laughs> now, uh, I did wanna mention to everybody why we didn't do a show last week here and why you didn't do a Strange World show um, last Tuesday. Why don't you tell everyone? I was at a gay retreat at Fire Island on the no, East Coast. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, the other, way, oh the other reason, the other reason. Not the truth. I was, no, <laughs> my computer and best friend uh, my I was alien. your best friend. I, I had, what? It's, I can't work under these conditions. I'm serious. No, my uh, my Alienware R4 tower, uh, a beast of a machine. The BIOS either either the motherboard crapped out or the BIOS on the motherboard crapped out or whatever. Uh, it just wasn't going to go. It didn't even launch into the BIOS. So I had to order a, another machine, and it's been a while. I mean, that machine has held me since 2010 long time during the computer world and I got another one and it took me a few days to set it up I had to uh, have it um, overnighted for Amazon and get in here and configure it and we're up and running so we're I'm on a new machine right now all right well congratulations yeah. thank you the new machine purchase well, and uh, it was in a, I, I was dragging my feet on it I just needed an excuse to finally get one because it's not it yeah I, I was I always wanted to get one but as long as the old one worked, why why switch? And yeah, you're one of those types of people. Are you going to get in uh, like an like an iPad now? It's another thing you said you wanted to get in the future. No, uh, oh. but if I travel more, too newfangled for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that technology. Uh, you know, no, my no, Qbox no, no. is I, modern tech to you. No, no, I like big tech. Meaning, okay. and I don't mean, I mean, I like big tech. I mean, I'm you looking like at big tech and you cannot lie, right? Yeah, you other tablets can't deny. <laughs> when a big monitor walks in like this 30 inch here, you get sprung because <laughs> it's, I don't like small monitors. I don't. I like big stuff. And, and so, yeah, if I have to get anything, I'll probably get a laptop when I travel more. Uh, but I'll keep this thing because it's, it's currently state of the art. It's an R7. So. Well, good. Stay, stay there. So. May you enjoy many years of great flat earthing on it. Yeah. So uh, I do want to add something that is sad, but it happens from time to time within the flat earth community. And when it does happen, we rally around and here's how we can help. Yeah. The other day, wait, that was a weird noise. What was that? That's my, my oh, drink. It's your drink. <laughs> ah, you're drinking out of a mason jar. Thirsty? Mm -hmm. Iced tea? It's a mason jar. Lemonade, lemonade. Yep, it's lemonade. Aww. And uh, gin. Gin? Otherwise known as gin and juice. Okay. <laughs> I hear it's, that's like a street drink. <laughs> that's like, cool. Like orange drink and purple drink. Right, right. Gin, gin and but juice. You have to say drank. Drank. D R A N K. Drank. how you pronounce it. As in get my drank on. Right. Well, Bob of Globusters wants to get his drank on because he just received an unfair, totally bogus community guideline strike for no reason. Bob? Yep. What the hell for? Globusters got a community guideline strike just recently for hate speech. Ah, now, that won't, that won't stick. appealed it, but that if won't, it sticks, that won't stick. not good. That's not just the gin talking. I'm saying <laughs> it's not, it's not going to stick. Well, if it does stick, 
they won't be able to live stream Globusters until August 21st. However, Bob of Globusters is creating a Globusters 2 channel right now. So be looking for that. That's how I said we can help. Be looking for Globusters 2 and subscribe to it. And by the time the show is done being recorded live, I will get that link and put it in the description box. Um, so it's it's for the show if you're wondering, as I asked Bob, what what was it? How could anybody have misconstrued anything on Globusters as hate speech? Well, it was a show called Get Your Tinfoil Hats On Kids. We're d going down the rabbit hole. It was one of those shows where uh, Globusters discussed whether or not planes actually use jet fuel. So I don't know. We're, we're a bunch of pilots. Um, you know, uh, community guidelines striking Globusters considering it hate, hate speech. I, no, I it's know. trolls. It's trolls. In fact, I have a relatable story, if mm. you don't mind me. Please. Well, as you know, I also got a, what well, was it, a community guidelines strike? It was a hate speech report on Flat Earth Clues, the director's cut. Oh, yeah, because that thing's so hateful. No, oh, my God, that thing just filled with ah, anger. You know. <laughs> All those four-letter words. How, how <laughs> like, how will grind, fall. Find your bones to make my bread. No, yeah. it is, uh, it was, somebody reported, some troll said, and, and the reason why they did it was they said that it was going to, it was trying to incite some sort of riot. You know, like, remember I got to the end of the, the clues and said, hey, you should contact your congressman. You should contact this. You, you should go out and, and be, you know, not necessarily I was promoting activism, saying these are things you might want to do. And some guy reported this. And YouTube looked at it at a glance and said, okay, it's not hate speech and it's not inciting a riot, but they have a new term for it. They called it a borderline video. And that like a borderline meant, personality disorder, just kind of sort of. of. It's, it's sort of they were they were kind of delving into like like well, it may it may or may not be insightful, and, and you know not not that sort of way. Meaning it may not be promoting people to do bad things. And but they said, well, do you want to appeal? I go, hell yes, I want to appeal. And I said, look, I was really really quick. I said, there's nothing offensive here. This is just a collection of my other videos that have been up for years. And it took them a little while. It took them five weeks, but it was overturned. They five finally, weeks. Yeah, it took a long time. I was really well because it was well, a long video. Remember, it was two plus hours. Okay, well, Globusters so. is even longer than that, and so that's good because Bob said he's going to be listening while in the car. And Bob, if you're listening, keep in mind that it may take a while for it to be over. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're appealing something like that. Uh, it has to be done manually, and I'm really surprised in his case that there was anything that... But the trolls will do anything they can, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, a little bit, because oh, yeah. of what happened recently with the whole uh, IPS thing. Oh, yeah, that's we should bring that up. Yeah, we should bring that up. Look, trolls, we, we have our supporters. We have a lot more supporters than we do haters, but our haters are you know, an enthusiastic bunch. And haters are going to hate. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, 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 hate. A wise and yet moderately young woman said that. Recently. And, yeah, and, you know, a lot of people that are haters uh, hate when I say that. <laughs> That's why I <laughs> continue to say it. <laughs> uh, hey, the trolls, you, you know what they do? They hate us because they ain't us. That's true, and I don't just mean us. I mean, you know, global, everybody. No, everybody. everybody. No, no, yeah. they hate Flat Earth. They hate, they hate the concept. They hate the fact that it keeps tracking higher and higher and higher. And I'm sorry that we are now only 800,000 away from Donald Trump's stats. And we're coming in at 20.7. Katy Perry's coming in at 24, 25. Taylor is coming in at, sorry, Tay-Tay is coming in at 27. We're, we're up there. And sorry, you're, you're not slowing this thing down. It's not happening. In fact, it's just getting worse. Every every video you make against this, just again firing wooden arrows into a bonfire. It looks like you're doing something. You know, I'm listening to us speaking, and yes, of course, I am listening to what you're saying. But I do also think that there's something wrong with your sound. Me? It's like your mic's not plugged in. Aside from the glowing aspect. Oh, you know, something new hang with the computer. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me go up. No you you might be right. Default right. microphone. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me change it. Microphone. Sure. Oh, better. Save. Already. Now yeah. better. Yes. Hey. Oh, All sorry. Right, I, well, this work. is the first. No. Okay. 
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hobbies. You over. I'm your co-host, Mark Sargent. That's Patricia Steer. No, he, the, here's the reason why. Oh my gosh, sounds better. Sorry. Well, luckily, I have a backup microphone. And you know this. The camera microphone was picking it up because you and I have not done a hangout on this brand exactly. machine yes. using this microphone. Good thing you noticed. Well, it's happened to me before, too. I forgot to, you know, the plug came out and I didn't set mine up to use this particular one. It would use the one from the laptop, the MacBook Pro that I have. And it, later I would hear the sound and it was just sort of dead as opposed to warm and rich. Well, I'm sorry about that. Yes, Mark. I can't do that <laughs> voice that deep. <laughs> anyway, um, well, okay. So maybe we'll get the trolls thing out of the way since we were just talking about the unfair community guidelines strike on Globebusters. Right. Um, the whole thing with IPS. Um, now, I'll just start by saying when IPS burst on the scene, he certainly did burst on the scene. He kind of appeared um, guns blazing with a lot of intellectual discourse and he was very good at getting people together in a group and focused on doing activities be yep. it doing chat raids whether or not you like him he was able to get everybody together marshalling groups marshalling a group of people especially as a diverse as flat earthers to go to do one sole thing is really hard to do, and he was able to do it because right. he has that sort of personality. He'd be good, a good general or something, probably. Um, and he also uh, had some very interesting ideas. Uh, DITRH is the one that came up with the billboard idea, but uh, uh, IPS, Infinite Plane Society, Tim Osmond, whatever you want to call him, um, he's the one who got that thing going, really, I think, first. And um, I think he did the first billboard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Ugh, can't recall. I don't want to give him credit where credit's not due. Anyway, everyone, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I interviewed him. He had very uh, interesting things to say about Flat Earth and why things may be hidden from us. He got attacked a lot by people for being, um, oh gosh, you name it, fill in the blank, even transgender at one point. So, you know, just like the rest of us, he got attacked. And um, he would attack back sometimes. He'd keep his cool, and then other times he'd attack back, and he'd go kind of nuts with his attacks back. And they got into the point where they seemed a little bit weird or kind of creepy. And, you know, it, it was a, I just sort of lost track of him after a while. I uh, would participate early on in chat raids a few times, and, of course, I said I interviewed him, and he was on a panel show of mine. And, um, you know, I liked what he was doing, and then I kind of didn't like what he was doing. But what he's done now is really puzzling. It, it, what do you have to say about it, Mark? What? Really? Wait. Yeah. Uh, I liked everything he did in the beginning. Absolutely yeah, everything, uh, everything he did. He seemed, I agreed with everything you said there, but he seemed like... He the trolls got to him from time to time. They, yes, they did. They did. He, they could trigger him. I'm, I'm using that term correctly, right, kids? Triggered. They, yeah, triggered. <laughs> they they got to him and they pushed his buttons, his hot buttons, and he, you know he, he probably responded a little more aggressively. Than right. Right. Uh, but I love like the early stuff. You know, I did promos for some of the raids. I love the raids because it, it showed it was a real quick and easy way to show the community how strong we were, you know, just, a, you know, just just stuff we could do out of the gate. And that was fun. And look, if it wasn't for him, the whole press bonanza for the Mad Mike thing. Right wouldn't have happened wouldn't no a lot of people didn't like the mad mike thing so someone would consider that a negative they, they don't like it hey fine but it generated with three different waves of media that was pennies on the dollar. outside of the community i think that the community and i'm saying community meaning everybody who's a youtuber or who follows youtube that's different than joe normal or jane normal out there who doesn't know about youtube doesn't know about flat earth um yeah. those are the people that it would be great if we grabbed to look at this thing and some will laugh of course but others will look into it so yeah. uh, among the community he created some you know firestorms lots of controversy but he did get eyes on flat earth outside of youtube which i think that's good yeah yeah i i agree i 
Now, whatever happened with whatever he was reading, and uh, that, that's fine. Now, do I think that that particular channel that was created? <laughs> oh, there's two channels. I mean, yeah. IPS has always had channels yeah. turning and burning and, and, you know, then going on and doing stuff elsewhere and then coming back and starting a new channel. And um, there is a channel named, I think it's called Tim Osman. Yeah, Tim Osman. And, and I, that is not really an IPS channel. No, it I mean, it lo point. totally looks like it is, but it's one of those channels. I won't even say who the person whose channel that really is. No, um, but there's but, a couple dead giveaways on that one. One is the four people that he subbed to, whoever's channel that is. Were, Alex um, Jones, you Alex, and I, and, and Delta, Delta v. v, which is the uh, documentary. The so documentary team. The, the person who created that fake Tim Osmond slash IPS channel to try to uh, actually put you and I in with Tim Osmond as if we were all working right. together. And um, Alex Jones. <laughs> and Ali, Alex Jones to show, oh, they're all just mainstream. And Delta V, the documentary thing, it's just, but anyway, there's that channel called Tim Osmond that is not a channel by IPS, Infinite Plane Society, Jack Larson or whatever his real name is. Right. And then his there's his own channel in which with his own voice, he did say that, uh, I can't recall exactly what he said, that he doesn't believe in Flat Earth and that he was only doing this so that he could eventually write a book and his book's going to come out soon. Or and something. even if that is the case, I, hats off to him. If, if he actually pulled that off, if he became this... Yeah, this he fooled gorilla, me if that's the case. I mean... Yeah. He, that he okay. was a guerrilla journalist that was in for two years. I mean, I, does that hurt the community in the slightest? If, no. If you look back, not the parts where he went crazy or the the reprisals against people or where he sent people pictures of a bo dead body. Okay, none of that I condone at all. I don't have anything right. to do with any of that. Stuff he did is on him, not me. I didn't like any of it. And I eventually pulled away. But the good stuff he did was really cool. He galvanized the community and he got the word out to the non-flat earthers, non-YouTubers about flat earth using the Mad Mike thing. Was I a big fan of the Mad Mike thing? No, not at all. I was afraid Mad Mike was gonna die and that would make flat earth look crazy. And Mad uh, Mike indeed probably made flat earth look crazy anyway because that rocket couldn't prove anything, but it got people talking about flat earth. That's really the only thing that was kind of cool about yeah. it. But he fooled many people remember when there was lots of people that changed their um uh youtube uh icon to a penguin and you hardly see any of those anymore right now i'm not completely saying ips is a horrible guy because who knows the way ips is this could all be a stunt as well the whole thing yeah. that he's not a flat earther anymore and that he just did it because he's writing a book. Could, could be a triple agent stunt <laughs> you never really know but it doesn't really matter uh, we were so impressed by him and how he came, you know, came on like gangbusters and and really worked with everybody in Flat Earth, you, myself, uh, Jaron, and just many people, interviews and in, on our various shows, and then had shows where he would talk and paint for hours and it really interesting philosophy as Look, well. I, I we also didn't talk about anything bad or negative, um, mm. but the behind the scenes communication between him and other people seemed to just be dark. I wasn't privy to any of that stuff, but I did see videos where people were revealing that. That's I am never taking down the penguin slides from my Strange World you know, montage that I do, mostly because I'm lazy and I'm not going to go through all those slides <laughs> and see if I can sort out the penguin slides because they're not named in any sort of scheme. And the other thing was, look, I liked a lot of the stuff. I li yeah. like the art. Remember the art festival that he did? Yeah. That he did um, the live stream on? That was you fantastic. Know, they, you, um, eat the... This is such a non-vegan saying, by the way. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. Pretty much, that's what I've done with the whole thing. That's also and, what um, Ogre's saying. Yeah, probably. You would know. I'm not mad at IPS. Um, you know, do your thing, man. If that's what you felt you needed to do, if it was because you wanted to write a book and you used us on the way, um, okay. It doesn't matter. Flat Earth still continues. It doesn't make the Earth into a globe. Uh, here we still all are doing our thing. And he hasn't stopped any of us. So, right. so big deal. Yep. So Life goes on. Again, I have a feeling we'll see IPS again one day. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and and it, who knows? What, what if we see him on some mainstream show? Or it's like, you know, an independent journalist who was embedded with the flat earth community. If he is talking about flat earth, cool, I guess. You know, I don't care what he says because... He can't make the earth into a globe. And even he himself, after all he talked about during the time he was here, 
cannot believe that NASA's real. No. That we've done space travel, <laughs> that we no, live on a nobody ball. Go, nobody goes back. <laughs> nobody yeah. that deep into it with that much knowledge goes back. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. IPS is still doing things. He's still doing live streams. And I'm not mad at IPS. I think there's just uh, the confusion with his other channel that really dislikes him, making a fake channel with his name called Timothy Osman. Um, I, I think IPS is a good guy who has a lot to offer, but he does get triggered and does get angry and goes a little dark on some other people out there. And um, that is between them. I don't condone it at all. And we have a couple of people with penguins and wrenches in the in the chat. Um, yeah, you know, well, I'm all I'm all for people to do what they there. want, and that's it. Yeah. Somebody's asking me if I responded to the behind the scenes video of behind the curve. That's glaucoma asking. Uh, the there the weren't any behind the scenes videos. That was the pe person sitting right next to me who I knew was videoing the whole thing, uh, in which we were asked to speak to. Um, there was a Q and A with people on stage, and then we were asked to speak uh, to the audience behind us by just standing up in our chairs, which we did. And then the guy next to us started filming uh, me as I said that uh, a certain individual will never go to Antarctica. He can't. We have the Antarctic Treaty in place. He can't for many other reasons. I don't really think anybody's going to get snow cats and travel across Antarctica. Good Lord, no. Uh, it's literally a physical impossibility. I And I stand by my, you know, I also believe that somebody who's that interested in doing such an expedition would um, have, as long, they've been a YouTuber talking about Flat Earth for so many years, they would have done something about it. And they've if, done absolutely nothing about it. If so it wasn't secret footage that was, it was posed by that particular person I'm talking about as it was secret footage, but it was, done with me right there. I mean, it was right next to me while it was being videoed and I didn't interrupt anybody. We were part of a Q and A right before that started in which we right. were speaking to the live audience. Anyway, whatever, doesn't really matter. Yeah. People can believe what they want to believe. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. And like I said, regardless, doesn't make this place into a spinning ball in infinite space. Agreed. The only, the only secret footage was the, uh, the bootleg. No, oh, yeah, exactly. The bootleg, which, was, which has been pretty much squashed, and I'm, we don't I'm really in... even know who took that, do we? Do we? Yeah, we know, we don't. But it didn't get out very far. Uh, the the team Delta V was really good about standing on people that tried to release it on YouTube, and as of right now, there it's nowhere to be found. We have somebody trolling me saying my top lip is so frozen it doesn't look natural. I can't concentrate on what you're saying. Pink Prawn, I've never seen you before, but I'm putting you in a timeout and removing your comment, although I'm reading it on the air for everybody to see. There is a, There are a bunch of people trolling me about all this plastic surgery and things that I've done. This is my natural face. Anybody can look on my Facebook. Uh, it's Patricia Steer and go through all of my public photos of me from being a baby at like maybe two to three years old to today. This is the same face, aging along. No, I don't have anything done to my lip. My top lip isn't frozen. I move and speak normally as I always have. So uh, that's how I look. Now, there was a time I was using Botox to make the you put a shot right here and you make your forehead lines which go across uh you make it so you can't move your forehead but i can move my forehead and eyebrows now it's worn off i'm not doing it anymore it was something i did and i don't know will i ever do it again i don't think so but maybe i would it doesn't really matter i'm the one who told everybody about it why did i tell everybody about it just like I'm talking to you about this right now. I'm not hiding anything. I've never had facial plastic surgery. This is my natural born face. I haven't had, what do you call those things? Chemical peels, uh, prosthetics, uh, cheekbone implants. My God, all the things people say about me. This is just how I look. And if you don't believe it, Patricia Steer, my Facebook, open to the public. You can see all my pictures as I naturally age through the years. Uh, the only thing I do is I color my hair with henna, H-E-N-N-A. -N -N -A. It's a plant. You add uh, hot water and apple cider vinegar to it, and then it creates a red tint. And that is how I keep my hair as red as it was the day that I was born. So um, I am who I am, and I'm honest about who I am. But if you want to continue to 
accuse me of having all of these surgeries. I take a week off and there's a video about how I just had plastic surgery. People don't understand what real plastic surgery and facelifts do. Haven't had any of those things yet. Maybe I will someday, but I don't need any now because I look fine. I look like a well-preserved 55-year-old woman who has some good genes mixed with a good diet and a good attitude. So some random person named Pink Prana or whatever, 777, trying to troll me. Yeah, you got me to respond. I'm not responding for this Pink Prana troll channel. I'm responding for anybody else watching this. And I'm so sure some trolls are going to take this, what I'm saying now, and make a video about it and start making fun. And that's okay too, because guess what, buddy? You need us because without us, you don't have a channel. You have absolutely no flat earth content. All you have is making fun of other people. Therefore, you're irrelevant. Good day, sir. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, like, what, you know, anybody who knows me and follows this channel and likes me uh, totally gets it. And if you don't get it, get out. <laughs> Okay. Do we, uh, did you have anything on your agenda or are we, uh, we actually, we're going to kind uh, of do, do I have an agenda? No, uh, no. Do we, are we going to do back and forth with the, uh, with the chat room today? Well, yeah, I want I to talk care. about the chat a little bit because we haven't really done it for a while, but I also want to, um, talk about salt and sea and a big event that's coming up as you get progressively more tipsy with your juice and gin. Gin and <laughs> juice. Come on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> get your drink. Verbiage. Get your drink right. right. Get your drink right. Uh, yeah, we should probably talk about the the salt and sea thing, even though technically, in fact, I was reading the waiver that we signed. Are we technically supposed to talk about it? Uh, I don't think we're supposed to talk about it with the press, but I don't think this is the press. So, and we've talked about beforehand. Anyway, the point is, is that there's going to be uh, probably a meetup in Los Angeles. We'll find out in the next couple of days. And there's a debunker group a skeptic society, which is going to do a test out of the Salton Sea, probably one of the worst <laughs> locations you could ever, ever want to do. This was never supposed to be anything big. It was supposed to be this little group with a little podcast and they invited me down and I wasn't going to do it because it was like, it was stupid. It was like, it's like, I, you, both these groups are way too, I mean, it just didn't make any sense. Plus once I looked up where the Salton City is, S-A-L-T-O-N City, Oh my God, it's three hours away from so everywhere. So there's Salton City and then there's Salton Sea. Well, they're right. The sea okay. is 30 miles long and about eight, eight miles wide. And that's wide. where an experiment will be. And yeah, they're going to do some visual where, thing at dawn. And this is kind of, well, I mean, we're going to this. And yeah. it, I've looked up the area and it would be like, uh, if you could imagine Wiley Coyote, where Wiley Coyote is running. It's that kind of area. Yeah. Tumbleweeds, cactus. I mean, it's the desert. It's beautiful, but it's still the it, desert. It's actually very similar to where my, Mad Mike did his thing. Yeah. So it'll be, yeah. I think I'm excited to go. Um, it'll There's be one hotel in the whole town. And that's where we're staying. <laughs> I'd, maybe. Well, I mean, I, well, that's where you'd want to stay. Otherwise, you're going to have to drive an hour uh, at yeah. least to, to get into uh, anyway. There's, I think they're planning on staying north near Palm Desert, which is outside of Los Angeles. I don't know. Anyway, so we're National Geographic is going. Oh to yeah, shoot. that's what this. Yeah, is. that's that's the reason we're going. <laughs> National Geographic is going to shoot a thing out there and kind of talk to people, and they want to they want to go to a meetup in Los Angeles. So we will know soon, but it's going to be the weekend, probably of June tenth. Within the live chat, we've got many people saying, blah, 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 meet up here, meet up there. There's a meety meeting on Shasta, July 12th. And Lucy Lemons is saying LA meet up on June 23rd. Meeting so, on Shasta, July 12th. Why do I have a feeling that uh, Nana Snow is going to be at that one? Oh, cool. Well, it's I mean, got to be. That's her neck of the woods. She's in Mount Shasta. She may or may, she may not. She's been in the chat a couple of times, so maybe mm. she'll come around again. Maybe. I know she's a passionate vegan. Speaking of vegans, somebody called Pick Your Passion writes, come down to San Diego in July for a vegan fair. Meat eaters are welcome too. So it's cool. Arwen, I don't know anything about a Boulder gun confiscation because I haven't been in Boulder for a while, but yeah, I lived there for 20 years. Would I'm, there I'm, ever be? That doesn't even sound it right. It doesn't even, doesn't even make sense. Uh, I'll, I'll find out. I'll, I'll mm. look it up if I get a chance. Uh, we've got someone here. I'm reading troll comments. Some some random troll saying veganism is all a scam. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> By the way, if you guys want to watch it, I'm sure that anyone that's been catching up on, just to jump out of chat for a second, on the latest videos of the day, a very infuriating one by Big Think, which is called Three Proofs That Debunk Flat Earth Theory, NASA's Michelle Thaller. She is a basically a public relations person for NASA. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Oh, if you could only get your hands around her neck. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I know uh, you. I don't mean that literally. Ditrh but. says she should be punched. And <laughs> no, I, that's though, also I don't. I don't advocate that. Hey, hashtag me too. But <laughs> at the same time, she, when you're listening to her, I mean, you can tell it's really annoying her that she even has to do this video. Mm. And it's like, yeah, well, there you go. Another two million sub channel on the pile well guess what even if watching that can make you a bit angry it's also getting the words flat earth out into the world where people may not have heard those words together in the same sentence before yeah. and some of them will laugh and then some of them will look into it i mean that's how every single one of us uh, is here right now yeah. every single one of us saw flat earth coming across the screen at one point while we were looking at other videos um, unless we were told by somebody, but we're going to say if it's on YouTube. And, you know, we kind of either said that's dumb and, you know, click somewhere else or haha laugh and then moved on. And then later, one day, something happened and we looked. And then, boom, here we are now. That's exactly what happened. Hmm. So we've got some penguins in the chat doing the penguin emojis. So uh, Chris Topher is saying healthy eating is a scam. Oh, well, yeah, right. Yeah, that's a thing. There's been this anti-vegan hate thing happening, which is, uh, you know, what I've always said to people is, I'm vegan. I went vegan for the animals, not for my health. But my health has always been good and it's right. still good today. I take no pharmaceuticals. I don't take supplements. I used to take supplements. Not that I needed them, but I thought I needed them when I first started in veganism. I still have them. I could get rid of them, but just throwing them away seems waste but the only one i do take is uh b12 and very occasionally so um i'm whole food plant-based and i don't wear any leather or suede or all my makeup is not animal tested and nothing in my house is animal based at all so what i'm trying to say is that's up to me and my choice i'm not mad at anybody who's eating meat it doesn't trigger me if somebody eats meat in front of me you know mark i've gone out to eat with you and you eat meat uh i i but um, I feel guilty about it. Well, but I don't make you feel guilty, though. Oh, I know. I know. I don't, you know, I don't ever say to anybody anything. Like, I just talk about what my journey is, which is I went from vegetarianism to veganism, and that's where I am, and I'm not going back. And if you want to explore that, there are many good resources. And if you think it's stupid and you want to eat raw meat, more power to you. You do you. I'll do me. Veganism can't be a scam because it's not trying to sell you anything. Um, I don't eat processed vegan f foods. I don't eat the frozen vegan burritos or pizzas or whatever. But you can if you want to, if that's what you feel like doing, if it makes you comfortable, um, do whatever you want. I try to stick with just natural foods. And I am not a perfect person, but I try to be as vegan as humanly possible. And that's my journey in life. And other people have different journeys. Oh, weirdly enough, we've got goddess witch Bella. I'm not sure if that is the witch Bella we were no, just No, I don't think so. <laughs> Could be another one. And yet uh, when, I, when I see a chicken walking through some vegetables in a garden, I think chicken salad. <laughs> and when I see a chicken walking through a garden, I think of bling bling the BS of the ISS. And why? Why would I do such a thing? Why well, would you do such a thing? <laughs> because she has chickens. She keeps chickens, even chickens that are rescue chickens. She's built, she's got a video on her channel. So check out Bling Bling, the BS of the ISS. I've not yet seen it, but she did it. I asked her to do it. She calls her chickens her girls. She can even call them girls, girls, and they'll come running. Um, they love her. She loves them. She's not vegan, but she has these chickens and I believe probably eats the eggs and uh, enjoys the chickens. And I enjoy the fact that she's rescued chickens and loves them. And they're her pets slash friends. And she's not kicking, uh, killing them and cooking them. Uh, but, but you know what? I know some people do that. And like I said, it doesn't bother me if that's what you decide to do. I have made a different decision for my life and any, anybody else can, just like it doesn't bother me to be around globe believers. Um, 
I prefer being in the company of flat earthers because we don't have to explain all of our beliefs because they're not just flat earth related. Most flat earthers believe a lot of things are lies, you know, uh, the political world, the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, I don't need to really go on. So we don't have to, um, uh, I don't police our own speech when we speak among ourselves, but, um, you know, with globe believers to me, they're just like me before I came to where I am now. And when it comes to people who are eating meat, they're just on a different path than I am. So you do you, I'll do me. Alejandro Rubio says that with B12, all you need is potatoes. You know, that could be a case, the case, because I went for years without yeah, taking any uh, B12 supplement, which is something that people believe you can only get from meat. Um, I get it from B12 made from mushrooms, or you can get a B12 injection. I don't know what that's made of though. But it doesn't just come from meat. It comes from unwashed ground dirt vegetables. And how do you think cows get it in their body? They eat the, the grass, the whatever plants, and then it's in their flesh. And then when people kill them and serve them up to you, you're getting B12 that way. But these days, cows raised in factory farms are given B12 in their feed, a supplement. So meat eaters who make fun of vegans for having to take an occasional B12 supplement, um, they're taking a B12 supplement as well, filtered through a cow's flesh. So, boy, this is a ranty video I'm doing today. <laughs> it is a little ranty. That's okay. Uh, hey, by the way, you, I got to thank you for sending me that link for the DR Lee video. Oh, yes. And that was sent to you and sent to all of us. Uh, wrote, that was sent to you by me, but I heard about it from all people, free people. His name is David. And uh, he pretty much found this guy named DR Lee, who um, is one of those people who um, came out, talked about his story. He was in the military and his experiences being in the military showed that we don't live on a spinning ball. Maybe you can mention that. Yeah, yeah. I well, I got got the video same as you, and I put it up on my channel. It's called Flat Earth U.S. Army Testimonial by Channel Dr. D. Dot R. Dot Lee. So not Doctor Lee. That'd be a common mistake. The he talked about being in the Army Air Defense System. He was a mechanic, mm -hmm. and said that he talked to a lot of different people. Seemed like a very personable guy, and said that, yeah, everything that he saw out there and everybody that he talked to seemed to confirm what he already knew, which was the earth isn't spinning, which remember all the military guys I've talked to to date, they've all said that not only is it flat, but the Coriolis effect isn't being used in the firing solutions. So the artillery guys, the tank guys, the torpedo guys, the missile guys, all the same thing he goes, oh, yeah, we've heard that the earth is spinning. No, we don't calculate that. So whatever you hear on mainstream just isn't the case. Um, Flat Out Elected is saying that D.R. Lee is one of his greatest supporters. I love that guy. Yes, he is a Christian as well. So um, it's a good channel. Um, I'll try to remember to put the link to it in this uh, video's description box when we're done. Uh, a lot of people are having some, oh, this is a really interesting chat. The chat's more interesting than us, Mark. Let's just shut our show down. Really? <laughs> good night, everybody. The, um, uh, why? What are we looking at? Oh, just, you know, so many cool things. Um, uh, we've got Karimi Sun. Safe hold saying somebody named Dr. Wallace has interesting information about nutrition and disease. His lectures are on YouTube. Uh, Plain Permaculture says, Hey, Mark and Patricia and everyone, chickens and food. Check out permaculture. Fed Unars says, What's an egg? It's not an unfertilized embryo, it's a chicken's period. Yeah, that's right. So we've got people of all sorts of uh, persuasions in the chat, and I'm okay with every single person here. Uh, um, we've like got to somebody talking about uh, Botox being um, injections are composed of botulism toxin. It's from bacteria, uh, salt and distilled water. Um, the reason that I'm not doing it anymore is just I just don't want to spend the money on it. And I don't really have heavy forehead lines anyway. People are under the impression that her face is full of Botox. Botox doesn't change your face shape. It will cause you not to be able to move like moving like I'm moving now, you wouldn't be able to do that with Botox. Botox does have a use in medicine for people who have bladder control issues. Um, I know a woman who's uh, got multiple sclerosis and she goes and has to be put under and they inject um, Botox into some part of her bladder so she doesn't have to use 
adult undergarments, uh, adult diapers, let's say. Um, so it helps her not to have to pee herself, basically. Some people have Botox injections to prevent um, ticks in their eyes, you know, people that have this sort of ongoing tick. And so they found that it worked for those issues, and then they started using it for cosmetics to freeze a tiny portion of the face so it wouldn't create lines. So I I'm don't have the lines already. I just wanted to do it to see if it would help me look nicer. And it didn't do anything really except freeze that part of my face, of my forehead. And now it's almost worn off and I can move my forehead again fine. So I'm sure it started off as something else, like all drugs. Yeah, exactly. They were using it for uh, real reasons and then it transferred over to the beauty industry. Kind, kind of like that blood pressure medicine drug, which turned into the boner pill. Oh, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things are like that. There's a um, medicine for uh, either cataracts, maybe it's cataracts, that they found out that the people that were putting these eye drops in their eyes grew incredibly long eyelashes. So they started selling that for, I think, under the brand name Latisse to have women grow really super long eyelashes that look really scary and like touch their eyebrows. So not so good. Um, there's another drug called Retin-A, Renova, which is a derivative of vitamin A. And that was originally prescribed for people who had really, really, really bad acne. And then some people found out that it made their skin look uh, more youthful. So I guess that's what they do with pharmaceuticals. I'm not yeah. against the pharmaceutical industry for life-saving measures. Or even the woman, uh, like I was talking about, who I know who has multiple sclerosis, so she can actually go out in public and not have to worry about peeing her pants. Just imagine how humiliating that would be if it were you and how your quality of life would be diminished. But to be able to go in and have that injection uh, once every couple of months, then you can yeah. live normally. So. There's aspects of pharmaceutical industry that are great. However, some of these products, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, were tested on animals. And that's the sad part about all this. There's almost no escape from that in the current society we're in. It's just like the globe society that we're under. In fact, it's part of the globe society we're under. Um, there's been enough animal testing on all of these drugs. We don't need to test any more. We don't need to test new batches over and over again. We know they work. Right. Let's move on. We can use computer modeling. Uh, we can rely upon the past tests. It's it's really disgusting. So, Agreed. Hey, by the way, did you check my show out last night? Yeah, I listened to a pretty good part of it. Yeah. yeah. Repeat guest. Really surprised. Yes. Let's uh, talk, uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, the repeat guest was Ray Goodwin. He was a career surveyor of 27 years for the United States Department of Agriculture, a planar surveyor, P-L-A-N-A-R, like 99% of the surveyors out there, which means that if your project is under 6,000 acres, you treat it like the world is perfectly flat which means almost every project out there is under 6,000 acres. And it's been hard to believe two years since he was first interviewed. He was interviewed of April, in April of 2016. And we got a chance to talk beforehand. I said, why don't you come on the show? We'll talk about it. See, see what you have to say two years later. And he had a lot to say. He was just, he was ranting kind of like you are right now, where he was just going off for freaking tears, mostly because of the geodetic surveyor that came out against him. I remember two, that time frame in Flat Earth. Yep. Two years ago. And and he really I took, you know, he's like, because he was he was talking down to him, like geodetic surveyors are so much better than planar surveyors. Like, what are you talking about? There's hardly any of you anywhere. So how can you be that much better? Plus, you don't even work on the same projects. And he was, he, he, it was wonderful listening to him. He was just charging uh, and he's more flat than ever. Not only did he not recant his tef testimony, he doubled down and said, look, you need to talk to the Army Corps of Engineers. You need to talk to these people and these people and look at these projects. He goes, it's all flat, all of it. And he's more convinced now than he ever was. So good for him. That's and good. I was That's great. In fact, yeah. You know, you did a lot of subject matter experts, and you're still doing them as they come, you know, across your desk. As yeah, you yeah, yeah. Because you haven't solicited for any of them. You haven't. No, I don't know how I would. They contact you out of the blue, and you know they're just out there in society, and they say, "Hey, you know, I need to talk to you. Leave you a voicemail or send you an email." Right. Um, and it was really good to hear from this guy again on your show last night. To, it just reaffirms that these people aren't just. It's not a um, flash in the pan. They don't just come out flat and then 
recant later they're they're still here with all of us doing what they're doing right. living their life and maybe they're even telling people about it you you never know yeah it's it was great great to hear from them and again i'm glad that the people remember the retention rate all the people that are flat find me ones that have gone back to the globe oh, of course there's going to be people that aren't as enthusiastic as they used to be of course you know flatter well it, it can wear on you you know oh, yeah all the trolling for example you know your channel yeah. like bob from globusters like we say getting yeah. unfair community guideline strikes it can be it can be tiring it can be it can flat earth yeah. can be painful yeah. you you know it we all know this yeah but, but we're in it to win it and i don't know what winning means Maybe winning more hearts and minds to this changing boss. the world. We are we one will. person at a time. Hey, hey, by the way, I also two two quick things from your chat. I got to mention real quick uh, yes. in case whoever it was. I hopefully they're still around. Uh, first thing is somebody said check your band list because Anana Snow may be on it. And Me? apparently, I don't I don't ban anybody, so I don't know much about this. Yeah, band I don't either. Thing. Well, that's not true. I occasionally will ban someone, but well, it's mostly the mods. Just saying. Too. The other thing was, uh, I saw Dan Pratt in here earlier, and right. he was asking, he, he was trying to be as critical as he could, saying, look, talk, you know, let's talk about the mockumentary. And, it's and, not a mockumentary. Uh, exactly. Look that it's word not, up. Words no, up. No, no, it is not a mockumentary. Define mockumentary, please, Mark Sargent. Well, officially, a mockumentary is a professional acted slam against a particular topic, but it's done completely straight-faced like uh, Best in Show. The director of Best in Show did a series of mockumentaries where he used the same actors and making fun of a topic, but absolutely shooting it straight-faced. And that was about um, dog, the dog show. The dog world. shows, yeah. Now, Best in show. Let's look. everybody in it was an actor, a Hollywood actor or actress who we, we know their real name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knows name, them. And none of those people actually show dogs for a living. No. So they were all playing characters. Now, certain people will say you and I are playing characters. No. Well, that's not true. And in a mockumentary the whole thing is about a a a, a fake it's a, it's a farce it everything is a, is it a is farce a parody. And it's, and it's a it comedy is, as well yeah it's a comedy it's no no but but i want to i want to be clear here and and i've said this since the beginning after you and i you know because you and i are some of the few people that have actually seen this thing in its entirety mm -hmm. in fact we saw it twice probably very few people saw it twice other than the creators themselves and that is look yes it is a mainstream production meant for mainstream Will it be controversial in the flatters community? Oh yeah, it will. You yeah, we betcha. knew that when we started. we knew that going in absolutely. But would I absolutely use it as my number one recruiting tool outside of the flatters community to introduce the subject to people that are just walking on the street? Yes, I would, because it is fair. It shows a really honest depiction of the people involved, and it shows both sides. So it gives a it gives a globalist the word like hey, you want to call them globies or globe tarts whatever uh, it shows the the globalist community uh, it gives them something to latch on to you know so it talks to scientists and an astronaut and a psychologist and all this stuff so it is not it is not a mockumentary will it generate controversy yeah you bet it will, will every some people watch it and laugh at flat earthers yes but yes, even if will. it didn't exist people are watching all of our all of our channels including dan pratt's and yeah. laughing at his content too dan pratt gets trolled by globe believers we all do they all sure. laugh at us and think we're morons and idiots and drink bleach and die um that's just the way it is we are all laughed at that's what happens when you sign up to be a flat earther you're signing up to be humiliated that's and, the case but we know we're in the right so we keep going and we and, keep trying to share it with others and this is just a way to share it with others uh, and it's not even that big of a thing. It's uh, been seen by maybe 400 people at a film festival in Toronto. That's it. Right. And we didn't know the title was going to be Behind the Curve when we did it at all. In fact, I remember suggesting titles. They only announced the title to us way after we were done filming. And yeah, none of I us, including Bob from Globebusters, he messaged me and said, I hate that title. I said, I hate it too. But I don't. you can't do anything about it. That's I the media. They do I, these things. I don't hate it. I don't hate the title, and here's why. You're I'm, so positive. Well, no, no, no. I, you gotta remember, you're in the community. You can't. You're not gonna be. It's objective. hard to divorce myself from the fact that, yeah, I, it, I'm in the community. It, it is. It is the bait behind the curve. Lets the people know that the when they walk into the you know, the theater or wherever they're gonna be sitting down and watching this thing, that they're safe. They're okay. 
I hate, I think I'm going to mock flat earthers. Therefore, this movie seems like it's going to mock flat earthers. I'm going to sit down and we're going to enjoy a big laugh together. Is not the case. And read the reviews that have been out so far. If you, if you have any doubts, go to uh, behindthecurvefilm.com and look at the reviews. The links are at the bottom. You can go to them. You know, there's a handful of reviewers out there, but they all said the same thing. The people, uh, they're treated very gently and it is not a hit piece. It is not a hit piece on the community with the exception of one guy. And he's not even, it's not even really a hit piece on him. We won't name him, uh, but it is a, he's made the villain. And he's not made the villain. He well, was just filmed from his own channel, which I don't think was right. Being him, it would be like well, if somebody uh, yeah, filmed me it's... talking now and said, this is what Patricia's like. I'd have to say, yep, that's me. Because it was you, me. You know what I mean. No. I mean, he's naturally, okay, in the editing, he's naturally the villain. It's not hard in, in this case because there was out of all the science, look at all the scientists that were that they talked to. None of them were shaking their fists. You know, you didn't have Neil deGrasse Tyson saying it was a, a danger to democracy. You had to say, well, you know, they're Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't get up there and say, I created Globe Earth. <laughs> it's <laughs> <That> my <laughs> movement. <laughs> you, all the, the people from the world of science were smiling as we were. And so I was like, okay, do we have any antagonists for this film? Well, we do. When we didn't know that he was going to be in it either. We knew very little. All you knew and I knew totally was the parts we were filmed in. Yeah. And then you told me what you were filmed in independently. And I told you what I was filmed in independently. Right. Um, that's it. Like, I, I didn't know that Nathan was going to be, was going to have a part in this. No, until we saw it. When we saw it in uh, yeah. at Hot Docs, because they showed it to us uh, in, a, in a private screening, um, we we were like oh wow we were on the we were on the ride of watching a, a film we didn't know a lot about uh, just like anybody else in there and went oh wow look who's in it wow interesting um, so anyway uh, a lot of people aren't going to dislike it in the community but it's not for the community that's no, the thing no, it's, not. it's not it is it's, it is something for the mainstream up until that, now I remember guys mainstream isn't reviewing our videos. Mainstream doesn't really maybe know that there's a thing going on on YouTube. Now they will. If it ever gets beyond the well, uh, some of them film do. fest. It may never get beyond the film fest. There's, there's with too only many 400 people seeing it. That's it. Including That's the reviewers. It may just die right there. Uh, and we, uh, we did not get paid to do any of it. Um, we signed away any options to get paid in the future if it gets sold to like any, anything Whoever, big. yeah. If Disney not, buys it, for example. It's not spawning a TV show. Um, there's just nothing to it other than we did it. Now, other things could happen because of this. And they already have uh, National Geographic. They saw the uh, trailer, trailer for the documentary and said, interesting, Flat Earth is a thing? Huh, wow. Uh, let's do some kind of experiment and we'll film it. That's what's going to happen is more media will see it and more and more and more. Now, what happens if we go out and that experiment kind of fails? It could, because guess what? Experiments aren't easy to do. I don't do them myself. It's very hard to do an experiment and get it to go right. And that doesn't mean the earth is a globe because usually when experiments fail, it's more of a situation where it, it comes off. It could be either one. It's, um, you know, the word I'm looking for, right. um, inconclusive. Uh, and that can happen when you do an experiment. It, that doesn't, the scientific method is testable and repeatable. So in order to have a successful experiment, you've got to go out there and do it like 50 times and make sure you're getting the same result and then show it to the public. This particular experiment, it, who's going to be doing the experiment? Um, apparently, it's going to be a no, no, it, we no, we have we're little, kind of like the observers, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we have nothing to do with this. This is a skeptic society that is tied to the podcast. Uh, oh no, Ross and Carrie, and or Carrie and Ross. Oh no, Ross, but it doesn't really matter. And I think it's a one-off. I mean, you know, you're going out to Salt and Sea. They're obviously not repeating it a whole bunch of times, but they're planning on doing it at dawn so that it keeps the heat levels on the water down the so thing is is that us being there since we're not conducting the experiment nor are we really condoning the experiment it's not our experiment drink is what we can do <laughs> mimosas <laughs> done whether or not we show up okay we yeah. didn't start it uh we didn't start the fire it's just being done and then we're, we're going down there if the experiment is done in a bad way or 
in a stupid way, um, we can actually be the voice of reason. And when National Geographic goes and speaks with us on camera, we'll be able to explain why the results are the results if it's if right. they just did it really dumb and you know any flat earther would be able to see why it was done stupidly if yeah. we don't go and the experiment shows something like that it's a globe um and no flat earthers are there to say hey 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 that's not exactly what that proved then we, flat earth can lose this right. way at least either it's going to show it's flat because it is or it'll show something inconclusive and we'll be able to step in and, and tell people what that really means and the science behind it the real science behind it spoiler alert and i don't want to it's give, flat <laughs> well i don't know i don't want to give these guys tips ahead of time but shooting across a contained salt lake in eastern california in the summer is probably one of the worst conditions you could ever use and and they're going to again try because because of the heat that's going to be coming off that thing and uh, yeah, I understand you're going to be shooting at dawn to try to reduce that, but that is not. Well, the not, desert's somewhat cool at the morning, the dawn time. Uh, yeah, but it's still absorbed a ton of heat. We're talking east. You know, look up where, where this place is. It is out there in the freaking nowhere. I know. It is. It is going to be hot. And what if the wind comes up? You know, what, then what? Uh, now, what do? are they? What kind of laser are they using? I don't even think they're using a laser. What I think are they a, doing? I, I think it's Two visual tin only. Hands in the string. I think they're doing the whole. Again, this is a test we've already done. You, you know, our community has done a whole bunch right, of times. Right. And people like will we, say, "Oh, well, then why are Patricia and Mark participating in a test that's already been done?" We're not participating in it. We're, we're not participating. We're going we're, yeah. so that regardless of the outcome, we can be the voice of the flat Earth voice of reason. Yeah, I, and, I absolutely was not going to go to to this. I, I because. Why would I? Like, fine, you have a, a person, a group that's going to try to disprove flat Earth. Get in line, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Better than you have tried, and they've all failed up until this point. So, and this is going to be a one-off. <laughs> You're going to do this in probably one of the worst set of conditions you ever could do. And But then National Geographic is going, hey, is there anything happening that we could record? We're trying to do a segment. It's like, well, there's this test out in Salton. It's like, oh, right on. Let's, you know, production value. So they they were the ones that wanted to have, get more people involved. I'd rather National Geographic do a video that says, well, it was an inconclusive test or oh, it looks like it's a globe with right. a couple flat earthers there to say, actually, no, here's what went wrong with the test. It needs to be done X, Y, and Z way to make it better. Right. Then no flat earthers there at all to say anything and then just come up with a story saying, oh, flat earthers are stupid. The the point of this was let me let me nutshell it for you guys is that the only reason National Geographic is even involved in this project is because of the, the documentary. Documentary. They Period. saw the they documentary. Saw the, they saw ninety seconds of the trailer and said, and said "Hey, interesting, interesting." Yeah, you were you were there when they called. Yeah, when they called me and said, "Hey, how'd you like?" And that's that's it. They want to turn this into something. They want to, whether it be a, a segment or something bigger. They really like, for example, I, I know they wanted to get a hold of the documentary. Delta V isn't giving it up, not to them. And so it's like now they're trying to. I think they're trying to recreate the wheel here. Mm -hmm. So you know, trying to back like like today, I was talking to them and they said, "Oh yeah, we just watched the Flat Earth Clue." I'm going now. You're just you've just now watching well, the flat earth. Well, there's people clues. every day just realizing flat earth is a thing, or yeah. just realizing there's videos about flat earth on YouTube every yeah. second of every day around right. the clock. Yeah. So yeah. tracks bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. 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 Uh, Wake the sheep. Well, Michael says they picked the desert to have high refraction because the asleep sheep don't know anything about it. Well, okay. In truth, the reason why they picked this body of water is it's the closest body of why they want to do this on the cheap. We're not talking about a high finance group here. Not not Nat Geo, but the other I, I was looking at the hotel that we're staying in. Well, if we stay Bring there. Bring your own house. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> it's Bring the kind of hotel that basically <laughs> makes you want to stay in the car. Uh, I saw this thing once at a, a bed. It's called a Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a store that maybe you have near you, but they sell bedding. And I was just walking looking for pillowcases and I saw this thing that showed a woman in a sleeping bag and I don't know why it caught my eye it was on one of those end caps you know hanging and I looked at it and it's a thing that you go you get you buy it and you when you sleep in a sketchy hotel or motel 
you sleep inside it like a sleeping bag that keeps bed bugs from getting on you. So maybe I need to buy us some of those. <laughs> No, no, I'm no, joking. No, but... no, no. no. I, again, we may never. We who knows where where we're gonna stay. Um, but but I'm sorry. Back to the Salton Sea. It's the only body of water. If you're not going to the ocean, it is the closest body of water to either Los Angeles or San Diego. There's nothing else there. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a big salt. I didn't even know it was a real thing. Like it's a big salt sea that's out there, uh, thirty miles long and about seven or eight miles wide. So if you went in and swam, I'm not sure what the quality of oh, the water is. Oh, you'd probably float. You'd float yeah. for sure. Yeah, it, it would be tough to drown. Like the Dead Sea. Like the, I don't know if it's as bad as the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is pretty spooky. If you guys know what the Dead Sea is, basically you can just lay on your back and read a newspaper and uh, you just float on this thing. You, don't, you, don't, you do not know how have to swim. Salt water is very healing for the body too. If you have a cut, I remember this when I was uh, quite young and would be in Florida or Jamaica, anywhere we would go where there would be a beach, get a cut. You know, when you're a kid, you get lots of cuts from mm -hmm. playing. And you go in the sea and then it almost magically heals. It cleanses, you know, the salt water. It's a good thing. In fact, the healing aspect of the Dead Sea or any salt water in general is something you should look into if you want to have a good skin treatment. Dead wow. sea minerals are good things. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. think about when you have a sore throat. I mean, my mother would always give me um, a glass of hot water with a bunch of salt put in it and you'd gargle with it and that would kill the bacteria or at least reduce the pain. So um, dead sea salt is good stuff and just salt in general for cleansing purposes. Mm -hmm. All right, then. A great body scrub would be some extra virgin olive oil and a bunch of salt. It could be dead sea salt. It could be any like Himalayan sea salt, but ground finely. And then you uh, rub it all over your skin and it exfoliates you. So beauty treatments. We got everything going on in this show. <laughs> yes, we do. Saline solution used in your eyes. They they rinse out wounds with saline solution. Um, you know, if you got a, had a gunshot wound or anything. Right. Right. Yeah. So I plan on bathing in the Dead Sea. <laughs> really? The waters of I the salt and sea. I don't know if, if there, I, I imagine we go there, there's probably going to be advisories not to so go So what you're saying is don't bring a bathing suit? Oh. But I have some cute bathing suits. I need to use them. <laughs> I, I've already heard that there might be some environmental concerns out there. Yeah, I'm sure. So if, if the. Plain, if uh, plain permaculture is saying that fresh urine on cuts is good too, believe it or not. Yeah, I've heard that. Or if you get stung by a jellyfish at the beach. Crazily, if you urinate on yourself, or I know it sounds have gross, somebody do it on you. Water, do it on you. Yeah. No, but yeah. seriously, that can help from a jellyfish sting. Same thing. It's also a thing. Look it up. It is. It's a fetish. Dan W has contributed uh, one pound and ninety nine pence. I guess I don't know how to say that. He says, "Shout out to the sea and salt and exfoliating." <laughs> Tuppence, threepence. What place did you? Sorry, ginger sugar. Oh, bush. ginger what? sugar bush. Oh, by the way, ginger sugar bush shaved off his beard, so he's no longer ginger, ginger sugar bush. He's ginger sugar beard till it grows back. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I don't know what. Behind yeah, he the asked curve. what place did behind the curve get it. The no idea, and not that oh, would matter. It not didn't that make it into the top twenty. No. So, but. so people who are all worried about it ruining flat Earth and making everyone think we're stupid. Uh, well, that's just a rating film. system. I'll remember. That's it. I saw this stuff and no, for me, there was, and you and I went through the categories. In fact, we didn't, for example, we didn't see any other movies when we were there. No, we had, that weird? I thought yeah. we would too, but we just didn't. We, we looked through the list. It's like, eh, there's nothing that caught our eye. So it it's a not bunch even of things that were about empowering women. A lot of movies about that. Oh, there's yeah. a couple of movies about transgenders. Yeah. There, there's definitely was a um, agenda in some of the films that were being oh, shown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rogers, the big homage. That would have to, been a good one to see, though. That would have been okay, although depressing. Yeah. Well, sad. no. I mean, he was a beautiful man who left a beautiful legacy behind. Yeah. You know, really. The question is, will I? I personally think that the flat Earth is still more marketable to just about anything in media. Nat Geo, History Channel, Discovery, 
sci-fi, take your pick. There's all sorts of different networks that would that could jump on this and turn it into something cool. Because it is. It's trendy. It's polarizing. It's interesting. It's all get out. And it's positive. That's the best part. There is no other conspiracy I've ever heard of. Well, what? some would say it's not really positive. Because Compared to what? About the, the powers that should not be, if you want to call it Masons or Jesuits or Jews, whatever it is you want to call it, it that uh, have kept us under their thumb and have creating this system, this lie system we're living under. That's not that positive. And the whole globe thing and all the lies that all of our grandparents were told and our children are being taught in school. It's very depressing. But it gets people excited at the same time. No, time. that's true. I remember when I found out I, I was mad and sad, but primarily I was excited because of the truth aspect of it all. I sent one of the producers today the music list that I've been compiling. And, and he and I joked about that a little bit on the phone today. I said, look, find me another conspiracy where there's happy songs written about it. Anyone. There, you will not find any. We've got 260 plus tracks. Oh, wait, there's a couple great songs about the Ebola and swine flu, I think, too. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a really fun kind of like a it's a it's like a children's <laughs> song about Kool-Aid and um, uh, Jim Jones. Yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, other than that. <laughs> anyway <laughs> no there isn't there's well we have some we have fantastic songs and repeat artists people that have made that have made mul multiple tracks mm -hmm. that's how excited it gets people i uh, and i'm still just so pumped about it and i can't wait to tell the next group whenever i get the chance so what else is happening um everyone's getting geared up for the flat earth uh international conference coming up in Edmonton, uh, oh, Canada. Oh, right, we got it. Yeah, and we then get there's it. one in Denver coming up, and yeah. uh, the Canada one we got to get ready for pretty quick, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right. In fact, I don't think I got my hotel yet or my flight yet. No, I don't think I have either. I need to but we got, we got, we got a little time, but you know, I'll talk about that. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, the that's... Denver thing, I mean, that's coming up. I mean, they're they're both, I think, equally as big i don't know if one's bigger than the other no. i would think the denver thing is going to be a little bigger than canada because Maybe. canada just isn't really a country so oh, okay uh the well no i mean no i'm kidding it, it is there are a bunch of, i i love toronto and i love when i was in there. toronto and i've been to canada before i felt like i was in america 100 percent. i felt I like, I was, like I, was in a, I was in a foreign country and a nicer version of america yet yeah, it's actually really nice in fact i kept because i'm used to living in bigger cities when i was walking because you and i walked around a lot i would kind of do that very cool way you can look behind you but without going paranoid like so that you could keep track of who's around you so that you won't be pickpocketed but you look without looking kind of peripheral view thing i did that a few times till i realized no one's following us no one's going to pickpocket us we're in canada everyone's nice the roads i mean the, the the sidewalks are clean they've got mounted police on horses even the mounted police on horses let me pet the horses and talk to them for a while oh yeah everyone was like even the subways were clean yeah i mean i know bad stuff happens there bad stuff happens everywhere but yeah. uh it was it was yeah. nice it was really really fun yeah. so you canucks rock oh, i wouldn't go that far <laughs> no. no i would not i would not go that far uh i'm trying to look through the list and see if there's anything else that caught my eye in the last two weeks anything we missed um uh, do, do, do. no i think we're pretty caught up at the moment Everybody's doing their thing and everything. I again, I love the fact that now when you type in flat earth and you look through the list, it's basically all verified. Oh, quick reminder somebody tell Jaron because he broke congratulations, by the way, to Jaron. He broke six figures. He is at 102,000, 103,000 nice. subs. Well deserved. Which means, by the way, now you are official with the new YouTube rules. You can get your little check mark, Bart. That, 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 check mark next to your name all you have to do is send him a request say hey i'm verified now make me verified when does jaron get one of those uh youtube content provider plaques what I is the next level up i that? don't know i have no freaking idea it would be cool that when the very first flat earth channel gets that high level but that's reserved for um, it seems anyway people who do like PewDiePie yeah. you know those well are, yeah don't don't get me started on PewDiePie I'm not against PewDiePie after all really I mean I think he provides comedy and and you know very light it's not my thing but I, I'm not I'm not mad at him let's just say right. 
Oh, I learned a new, um, it's nothing to do with PewDiePie, but it has to do with the internet and YouTube. I learned a new slang word. Uh, is it prawn? No. R O N? No. Uh, that's is it an old one. T E H? No, it's wig. Like wig, like people, I mean, I've been accused of wearing a wig. Like you're uh, wigged out? No, no, not wigged out. I, I can't, I don't know if I'll get this right. If something is really great, you'll say, uh, you'll say it's wig or uh, wig, uh, wig snatched or wig exploded or wig burnt off. It was so great that your wig exploded into fire. Kind of like off the chain. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it's just the word wig. Kind of like off the chain. It just sounds so dumb to me, but. I, I don't know if that one's going to really grab hold with me. I'm barely keeping like, up. It's I, not I've for just, us. We're too just, old. <laughs> I've just started getting used to saying totes jelly. Oh, yeah. I think you should stop that immediately. Yeah. That should be the last time it's ever uttered on the show. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> it means totally jealous, by the way. Oh, I thought it meant carry lots of jelly because you no, and no, your mother it's, can it's, fruits it's, in your house. abbreviates freaking everything. And so... Although I still do not understand to this day why kids say roasted instead of burned. When we were growing up, it's always burned. Oh, sick burn, yo. That was when we got to the 90s. Probably they don't even say roasted anymore. Those same kids who said roasted are now like 35. <laughs> no, they're... I'm just saying roasted is an oven setting. Burn is not, unless you're my sister, and then burn is an oven setting. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. This is true. The who would burn water? My sister could burn water. She yeah. absolutely could. She's better now. She used to be terrible. She almost burned the uh, the beach house down. Wow. She was, she was fixing clam fritters. Mm -hmm. And she, well, was she fixing them because they were broken, or do you mean cooking? She was country hick language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fixing to make some clam fritters. Yeah. Uh no, I'm she was making turn clam, off light. Clam, clam fritters in a deep fryer. Right? Well, not mm -hmm. a deep fryer, you know, oil in a pan. It catches okay. fire. She panics. She takes the fire extinguisher and jams it in the oil then presses the thing the oil that's on fire spreads around the kitchen and she freaks out and she runs away and she comes to you and yells the oil the oil the oil is on fire <laughs> no we weren't that old so that let the mf burn okay really <laughs> sorry you i you know i i get a feeling you weren't as cool as people thought you were in school i wasn't cool i was just me whatever that is Right. You just pretended to be cool, but you were really no. not that cool, were you? Uh, no, it was never cool. I was just me, you know? Um, mm. Not cool, not uncool. Just mm. me. Just like I am today. <laughs> <Okay>. <sighs> I want to say hello to Fire Goggles and Jose JG Gonzalez, who says, do some shout outs. Hey, there we go. I'm doing some. Ace McLeod is in our chat. Also, uh, Kara Misan Safehold and Arwin and Dan W., who says he was never cool in school. CJ is here. Uh, Shasta Patriot Alliance says Aquarius. I'm Aquarius. Are you Aquarius? He's just saying Aquarius. Um, Rad Tech Me is in our chat. And I already mentioned Bling Bling, the BS of the ISS. Nora Noen's Flower is here. And uh, Glenn Parent and Rob Morrill. And. Um, <laughs> Um, Tesla's Apple as well. Um, your passion, Darren H. Jill Pete. Um, did I already say Mark of Zulu one? Chris Monk Seeley is here too. Bob from Globusters, who I already did mention earlier. Um, and I already mentioned Plain Permaculture and Goddess Witch Bella and uh, Ginger Sugarbush, I mentioned already before. And just hello to everyone. I appreciate you being here. Most definitely. It's kind of been a ranty, weird video. But um, hey, why not? Why, why not? not? Yeah. Oh, and Stephen Chess, hello. And thanks for being a mod. And I already mentioned uh, Mike of Wake the Sheeple. And I already mentioned Alejandro Rubio. Um, what else is happening here too? Oh, Dina Walker is here in our chat who says she just came in from watering the garden. And she had earphones on. I hope well, your health is doing better, Dina. If she's watering the garden, that means she's strong enough to take care of other living things. So she's getting stronger herself. Uh, earlier, we were talking about Bob from Globusters and an unfair community guideline strike for hate speech, which wasn't even true by some kind of troll. Maybe if it doesn't get um, uh, repealed, 
would make Globusters not be able to do live streaming. No, it'll it'll get a, it'll get repealed. But Globusters two, the backup channel is in effect, and I'm going to put the link to that in the um, in the description box of this video since right now it's being done live, and. Um, it is the former Xanadu channel, which I'm subscribed to anyway, and maybe you are, but if not, resubscribe to the Globusters 2 backup channel. And uh, they're going to be doing a 24-hour live feed coming in a few days, and no videos are uploaded to it at the, at the moment. So, you know, usually I don't have a lot of, like, people promoting their channels and stuff in my show, just because then people will use my show as a billboard or our show, Mark. But in this case with Bob and Globusters, this is sort of a community hey, everyone, let's pull together and, you know, make sure Globusters still stays afloat. I think it's going to be overturned. Oh, be Globusters fine. will be back in business. Everybody gets some sort of thing. I mean, I, I avoid... Strike, most, it'll be cool. Yeah, I avoid most of the community guideline strikes because I rarely make videos that are outside of... It doesn't matter. Globusters didn't do anything outside of the uh, rule book. No, 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 no. But... Wait, what was this video about? Oh, it was about the jet plane thing. No, well, no, I mean, it was I just don't... a regular Globusters about Flat Earth and blah, 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 but they did discuss the jet fuel thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even really go into that that much. Although I did, I did. And just so you guys know, every once in a while, I will make a non-Flat Earth video. It's rare, but it will happen. But I won't put Flat Earth in the title, so you, if you're searching for Flat Earth, shouldn't see it unless you subscribe to my channel and that you'll get the alert. And it's like, wait, why did Mark do a movie review video? And that is because every once in a while I get passionate about certain things. And we talk about we talked about the whole Star Wars thing and a woman who reviewed the Star Wars movie. Yeah, yeah. And then you had done a video on your channel about that. So people who follow you or I can kind of understand why you put that on there. Uh, well, there because who don't oh, well, it's okay. I never married and I never had kids. And if I had to have a fantasy daughter, it would be her hmm. because she would light people up on a regular basis and it was it's just great so i yeah so i did a little i just you know i do promos for so many different things and it's like oh yeah i'll do a quick little promo for her channel and just put it up there and i don't think she'll use it i think she'll go with some sort of yelling montage <laughs> but i thought it was did she ever contact you and say hey thanks for making that video oh yeah 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 she oh, did nice. and and she's she's not ready yet to remember she's a small you know small channel that hasn't done a lot yet and she wants to do you know her big thing is is, is yelling at the camera so i think she's going to try to splice stuff together i don't know if anyone's going to do it for her. i'm not going to be pulling that together you know i like music and visual stuff and so that's why i did it mm. so if anyone don't freak out if you see me making a video like that it's not like i'm going off a of flat earth it just means i had an extra 45 minutes waiting while something yeah. else was processing that i have interviews out. and then i have the secret show with you and then occasionally i'll just turn my phone on and video my cats walking around uh, exactly. because I love my cats and I feel like doing it and it's my channel and I can pretty uh, much do whatever I want on it and we all can. I right? did a video uh, uh, that started out as it was a male health video on how to deal with morning wood. And I remember that one. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> and I turned it into flat earth. I didn't even know what morning wood was, by the way, before And that. it was... The fact and that I'm you sort don't of sad really, that I do know now really worries me. Every well, guy knows this. Referred to as such. And, <laughs> what? I never heard I referred. I never heard it referred to oh, as such. Oh yeah, yeah. It's an old, it's an old saying. I don't think that the the saying's changed over the years. But the the solution is for you guys out there how to get rid of morning wood real easy. Drink a cup of water. That's it. You, it Why would works. you want to get rid of it? Why would you want to use it? I mean, isn't that what it's there for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> No. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. Really? We're gonna end the show like this? Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> the um. Okay. Here's here's the reason. Why. Okay. When you wake up. Wait, like, I wonder if I've got the song Norwegian Wood on the jukebox. I can no, play no, <laughs> underlying I this now. This don't this speech. think it's related. No. The reason why you really don't want to use it is because when you wake up, you have to go to the bathroom. So, and so it's like you have a problem because you have to go to the bathroom. But how easy is it for you to use the bathroom? If, you know, I suppose you could go in the shower or something like that. But the point is, is that, you know, there's all you look it up. There's all these weird positions that guys try to get in because they have to use the bathroom. No, drink a cup of water. It tricks your body and, and takes care of it in literally about 30 seconds. So, see, I knew this show had some redeeming value. Right. 
And that was it right there. Right, right. there. There you go. There you, you go. The solu it's solution it's to morning wood. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Had it, things if you knew then what you know now. That was the quietest sneeze in the history. Of sneeze. Sneeze. You're not Most people would have thought she muted attention. her microphone. I can tell you right now, she did not. That is the sound of her sneeze. It's pretty much inaudible. I've trained myself over the years, especially being in radio, to be able to sneeze without making a lot of noise. Hey, we have a two-pound thing. Shout out to Morning Wood. <laughs> my my brother would always say, "Your head's going to explode. Let it out." But because all those years from being a child till now, I've sneezed silently, like kept it in. I, I don't know how to let it out. You know, I've tricked my body and this is the way it is now. So we got a, a super chat from Morning Wood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a it's a thing. It's a thing. It is one of those quiet things that guys do not talk about to each other. I, in fact, the only reason I, I even kind of laughed and made a video is I remember a locker room conversation from years and years ago where Someone was talking, it was like, dude, you know, what do you have to do? And they were talking about, oh, no, you have to stand like this over the toilet. You, gotta, you know, there's all these weird positions because you're, you can't, you can't. And I thought, well, it's weird. Didn't even occur to me until much later when the internet came out and I looked it up. And here we are today. Here we are. The solution. Yeah. I don't know if I said hello to Good night, everybody. <laughs> and Chris, Flat Earth photographer. If I did not, I'm sorry, but I am saying it now. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Better than morning sawdust. Just, <laughs> that is such a cheesy joke. What's the story? Morning glory. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that isn't even that. That's uh, that's the band Oasis with uh, my sort of Oasis ish guitar over here, which is a Sheraton guitar Epiphone, which is like the band Oasis had back in the day. And I don't know how to play it. Yes, it is poser-ish of me to have the guitar there that I don't know how to play. But there's an interesting story about the guitar. And that's why it's within camera range. I could have it somewhere in a closet. I got that as part of sort of a bucket list of learn to play guitar. And I bought it for my birthday in February of 2015. Well, March of 2015, I found the Flat Earth Clues. And then... I just sort of lost interest in the guitar and gained interest in flat earth and have not yet I had a couple lessons, but it just didn't, it just didn't, it just Was didn't turn cute? out to be my thing, you know, but it's beautiful. And so now I have it as a, as a piece of art. Yeah, you could always have it I, as, well, yeah, it's a piece of art, but you could also have somebody famous sign it eventually. I guess it would only have to be Oasis. It's not Oasis's guitar or anything. Oh Go my ahead. gosh! I just remember. Did you sign one of the somebody's guitar at the uh, at the convention? Yes. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Why? Why were we signing that? Um, because he decided that it was uh, a cool thing to bring. You can Here's bring smaller things. Guitar, By the way, see? that gives you an idea of how tiny uh, Patricia is. <laughs> that, that guitar looks huge on you. It's, it's quite heavy. In fact, this arm needs to build up quite a few more muscles before I can hold it. And of course, I don't have the, the strap on it. But uh, yeah. no, I don't know how to play it. But it is a beauty. And maybe someday I will learn how to play it. But it's because of Flat Earth, I didn't start my lessons. It's because wow. of you, Mark, and the Flat Earth Clues. And uh -huh. many of us have something like that, that we were going to do, part of a bucket list, perhaps, learn to bake or, you know, whatever, learn to sew. Uh, start fixing the engine on my car. And then we got into flat earth and all of our time, that extra time we would have right. devoted to that is now devoted to you two making content and participating in chats. So Mark, I condemn you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for that. No, thank you. Hey, you're, no, you're seriously, you want to jump on the whole Rob Skiba, how when Mark Sargent ruined my life bandwagon, that's fine. I, I'm not I'm not exactly super thrilled that he does that, but at the same time it's flattering. Cause he because he, he puts that on, on different things, you know, when he goes out and does public speaking. He said it, in a, he said it when he was um uh at the at, con the at the conference, yes. Well, yeah, but he's using other things too. Cause he, he puts the blame on me. And it's like, yo, don't blame me, blame this Mark Sargent guy. It's like, oh, uh, throw me under the bus every mm -hmm. every time. Well, I'm I'm glad I discovered the clues, and I'm glad that you turned out to be of the three main flat Earth original OG guys, the nice one, the nice. <laughs> Can you're the one yeah. that I'm friends with? Although I tried with the other two, 
and I I'm really glad you. I nice tried one. with the other two. Yeah, no. and you know the other two have their positives. I'm not condemning them, but I can't go hang out with them, and I don't consider them my friends, and they consider me an enemy. So there you go. Yeah, hey, it happens. You're a good guy, Mark Sargent. Oh shucks, man. <laughs> Chris Topher says, morning wood debunks gravity. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't have brought that up. But it's true. Um, Actually, I put it in the list of my clue stuff. Because it's a, it's a clever little analogy of how, you know, because, it what, okay, the reason why I tied it to Flat Earth was the answer to morning wood was the exact opposite. It is the last place you'd ever, ever look for it. And that's why, I mean, look, mainstream science, Flat Earth, Flat Earth is is the last thing you would ever look at to try to solve your world. It is. Everybody else, you know, delves into all these different aspects of science, and it turns out the one that makes the most sense is the really old trick that nobody looks at anymore because they all were told it was stupid. If somebody would told me seriously, oh, you drink a cup of water, you know, you solve all your your problems. What, what are you talking about? It's the last thing. I need to go to the bathroom. Why would I drink more water? That's ridiculous, but in but that your body biologically, chemically, says, "Oh wait, now I remember." Basically, the not to dwell on this too much. The point is, is that the water reminds you because you're coming out of a dream state. It usually happens when you're falling asleep and your body is like, "Oh, what's going on?" When you're when you're um, coming out of a dream state, the water helps remind your body where you are. And it's like, "Oh yeah, by the way, you need to go to the bathroom." <laughs> I know. We really should way, wrap this know, up. Guitar, I can't figure out how to put the guitar back. I don't know why. One of the little things didn't work. So luckily it didn't crash to the That's point. because it's a prop, kids. She well, I've know already this. told everybody I don't know. I know. The stage handle, get it after we're done. No, That's fine. no stage handle. No, and you know, some people believe that those things you say are the truth leaking out. So people want to believe that they can. <sighs> There's still people who believe that this is a studio and that it's owned by a major restaurant company, <laughs> my house. <laughs> Okay. Tommy, would, Tommy would have already got it, but he's over at the craft services table. Ah, uh, yeah. They have little little ham sandwiches with the crust cut. Not here. <laughs> what? It's okay. right there. Ham is made from our friends, the pig, who want to live just as much as you and I do. <laughs> <laughs> Kill it. Uh, all right. Well, we've definitely given all the trolls and haters lots to use with this particular show and so oh, I hope they have lots of fun and make all sorts of crazy videos i look let, forward to it let me end my part on this because uh, i've seen the question here when's the documentary coming out yes. we don't know the second we hear anything we will let you know because remember the people that made this know that the flat earth community will be all over it and so they want to show it to the flat earth community they absolutely do regardless of the polarizing aspect of it so as soon as we hear something, we will let you know. Right now, they are looking for a distributor. And as soon as they get one, hopefully there isn't a gag order on the distribution part. Might be, though. I mean, that's that's the weird thing. It's like they could sell it, and technically the distributor would say, well, sorry, you can't tell anybody. You know, We have total release rights to this, and uh, that's it. And I don't think they even tell us like who they sold it to, other than maybe they can sell I don't know what the rules yeah, are. Yeah, well, we don't have anything to do with it because... Yeah. We don't get paid for it and, you know, no. whatever. Anyway, we'll find out. Just like everything in Flat Earth, we'll find out what happens. We're going to find out what happens with the documentary. We're going to find out what happens with uh, the conventions that are coming up or the Salt right. and Sea experiment that's coming up next month that we're going to. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. Flat Earth is unfolding um, like a rug in front of us, and we're all walking along at the same time, not really knowing where that rug leads. But we're all happily here and all together on the same rug. That's why I always say same team, hashtag same team, because like it or not, you might hate me, you might hate Mark, you might hate somebody in this live chat or somebody else's channel. We're all really here on earth at the same time. And so therefore we all are bonded in some way. So like it or not, we're here to stay. Again, I, I don't care if they hate me as long as they keep up with uh, Flat Earth. Yeah. So. Well, that concludes our show. Hope you enjoyed it. Links will be in the description box. And so naked there without the guitar. I'm going to have to go fix that. Tommy, go get that. <laughs> There's no Tommy. Whatever. I could use a Tommy, though, to 
be my personal assistant. That would be cool. Or she's really good at not looking at the stage hands. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See everyone later. Goodbye. Uh, and this concludes episode number. What is this? Two thirty one of Flat Earth and other hot potatoes. And give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to Mark Sargent's channel and keep it flat. flat. Morning Wood, George Clooney.